I guess we can start. So, before we begin, I have a quick announcement. Uh, maybe some of you know uh, I'm from uh, EC PhD Liaisons Committee, and we are becoming more organized hopefully this uh, semester. Actually, it's going to become an association hopefully next semester. So, we need names and uh, emails, Husky emails and phone numbers. I'll just uh, uh, give a list. Please, you know. Uh, give your information so we can become an association so we can get some money from school and we can do events you know similar to this maybe less similar to this like uh, more, 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 more recreational and less technical yeah maybe yeah yeah like, like we did uh, last time grills right it was a, it was a good barbecue yeah so let's do a few more notes, few more so i'll just give the please please yeah put your name uh, email husky email and phone number so and I start with a warning. So first one is, this is very fresh work. Actually, I said that uh, it's fresh out of oven. It's still cooking. It's still in the oven. Uh, it will burn me, hopefully, not you. Uh, and also, uh, well, why I'm presenting it? Because I think it's very exciting. It's very exciting, it's, it's, it's very exciting for me. Uh, and I enjoy playing with it. Hopefully, you know, I'll just... Uh, get across the, my excitement and you know, uh, I'll share the intuition and the simple ideas that we use to solve this problem. And the second warning is I am semi control and math blind. I'll do a lot of mistakes. You'll realize that. Um, maybe you'll not like it too much, but hopefully uh, it won't hurt the main message. So we'll uh, again uh, get through it. So let's start. So each of us remember jigsaw puzzles, right? Everybody solved jigsaw puzzles. What is a jigsaw puzzle? Some crazy man takes a beautiful picture and cuts it into pieces and you know tears them apart basically and gives you to solve it. Uh, basically, you you take those pieces and um, you you try to construct a meaningful uh, visual uh, image out of them. So my problem is very similar to this. We're gonna attempt. A puzzle like a jigsaw puzzle, the difference will be, it will be in time. It won't be in over a table, but it will be over time. So let's define it loosely. Temple puzzles are uh, given temporally shuffled samples of a multi-dimensional signal. I'll give an example. Uh, so this problem uh, is asking us to recover the correct sequence. We'll attempt it. And you'll just assume uh, samples are almost uniform sampled over time. So let's give an example. This is the video. I think you realize that the, its temporal order is messed up. And the question that we're gonna try to answer is, we'll devise an algorithm, hopefully you will get something meaningful. Now, I'll, I want you to really take a second or two or 10. How would you solve this? How would you solve this? Just, just think for a second. And I believe my, you know, proposition will be very similar to what you're gonna, what you're thinking right now, and I believe there are many solutions. Uh, I'm just gonna share our approach, um, basically, to solve quite a number of those. So let's start with the intuition. Now I need your answers. I want you to pick one of these sequences. Which sequence would you prefer? Which sequence you would prefer? You have to show me the video C. again. Oh, no, 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 you don't need the video. You don't need anything, you, know, you don't need any information. I'm just asking a very... C. C, right? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I mean, but why? Why? I'm giving the answer. Minimum intro. Minimum intro. Okay, who likes uh, minimum description? description like? Yeah, same thing. Same thing, right? Occam's razor? 
Almost the same. Yeah, same Almost same, right? So they are basically uh, pointing out, pointing to the same exact, not really exact, but uh, same exact intuition, I would say. Uh, same intuition. Now we're going to use this intuition, but I'll pick this intuition at the bottom. Maybe you're not very familiar with this intuition. Mm -hmm. I'm going to pick C because, not for obvious reasons, but I'll pick it because it's the minimum order autoregressive model. What, what, what is that? What is, what is that? So, I'll, I'll, give, I'll give more details, but let me at least if you were to compute the autoregressive order of these sequences, I can assure you A, B, D, E, F will get error order more than 3, more than or equal to 3. But C magically will get an error order of 2. Hmm. So, so far on this example, I win. Okay, that, that, that intuition works. And I'll propagate this intuition to many signals. Actually, your signal, your signal, your signal, I'll propagate the same intuition and I'll claim a very bold and a wrong uh, sentence, actually. I'll claim that most of your time series has an underlying low order, similar to that, similar to the example. Low order autoregressive model under it. So that's, the only, that's really what I'm going to use throughout my you know, solution. And how come? I mean, how can I claim such a you know, thing? I, I'm claiming that your signal is coming from a low order error model. Well, let's think for a second. A lot of physical phenomena are governed by what? I'm giving you the answer. Differential relations, right? You have a free throw, there's a second order differential. You have a speeding car, you have a differential relation there, right? It's, it's explained by differential equations. Now, if you have a differential equation, most of the time you have almost, I mean, most I think I can claim that uh, you have a appropriate, given appropriate sampling and other things, you have an AR model for that. So, what I'm claiming now, I'm claiming that if you have a differential relation, you have an AR model. That's why, actually, you have a lot of differential uh, relations in your signals, so that's why I can explain your uh, signals with AR model. But that's not really true. That's not really true, that's with respect to Wiener. So what Wiener says? I mean, uh, let's make it more correct, basically. So there is a, we start this signal, uh, which is very low complexity, which is very simple. Maybe literally looking like that. Take, for example, this video. What is this? This is nothing but a free throw. We are free throwing a guy. Right? <laughs> Aren't we? <laughs> I mean, it's a second order differential equation. But when, when we observe it, it's not really that simple. I mean, there's this old snow coming out, he has this hand over there. If I take a pixel over here, no, that's not a second order error. No, don't, don't, you're cheating me. Well, the magic is this one in the everything between. There's a very weird, chaotic things happening in this non-linearity, which match this beautiful, simple signal to this ugly video. Well, actually, it's a beautiful video, right? You, you enjoy it. But it's ugly because it makes the problem hard. And the problem is, most of the time, it is very difficult to invert this nonlinearity. It is very difficult. And this actually falls into this manifold learning, uh, dimensional reduction, all this research. But we won't touch on that. For now, we will forget about the real world. We will go to the ideal world, where we can uh, invert this nonlinearity. For, for some time, we will just assume, and I'll really show examples that we beat this nonlinearity and really get the correct sequence. But let's, you know, for the sake of uh, the talk, let's assume we can invert it and we can live in this space. Basically, where signals are, signals are simple, if they are, in, if they are the correct signals, if they are coming from a physical phenomenon. They have simple uh, shapes, we can understand them, etc, etc. So then the problem definition becomes this. Remember, we were trying to s sort things out, and my claim is, if your signal is coming from a physical phenomenon, which usually it does, you should have a simple form, low order AR sequence. And if somebody 
shuffled it, it will look very ugly. Or vice versa, the problem definition is if somebody gave you this high order sequence like 42315, I claim that this is not the correct sequence, but there's a simpler form which can be obtained by a permutation, which is the simplest or the lowest AR, which corresponds to the lowest AR. Basically, I'm seeking for the solution, I'm trying to invert this operation such that the result will give me the sequence that has the minimum uh, AR order. That's what I'm, uh, I'm trying to solve. So let's define a better method. Then we will spend a little bit of time here. I'll try to get the uh, message across. This is the only formula you will see. And hopefully, uh, I'll help you to, you know, to, you know uh, interpret it together. So, what I'm telling you. I'm just, I'm just putting into math what I'm saying. V is my signal after permutation. Hopefully the simple signal. That, that is so. I want to get that. And if I get it in the end, it will have, it will have a form of, this is the AR, right? What, what does it say? You know what, actually, to know my next step, I just need to know my past. That's the AI. That's the autoregressive model. In to know or future, I just need to know now and the past. That's it. That's the AI. And what I'm trying to achieve is my V, if it's in the correct order, <coughs> it should have the minimum error. Minimum error order. All right? So I am seeking for a permutation which permits my input to you such that the final result is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Basically, I'm trying to make 4, 2, 5, 1, 3, such that uh, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That, that's, that's really the problem. Is. That's what we're trying to achieve. Well, we define it. What is the problem with this equation? What is the problem with this optimization? I mean, it's so fine. I mean, we, we, um, we came up, hopefully, with a plausible objective to minimize. But what is the problem with this? Can anybody can? Minimize this easily? Is there anybody here? I would like to meet. <laughs> really, literally. I would like to meet if anybody can minimize this easily. Well, I would claim um, I would claim that it is extremely hard. It is literally extremely hard. So there's an equivalent formulation. These are exactly the same thing. You can pick either left or right. They are extremely hard, both. No ways. But thanks to the literature, uh, there are ways to get around those. Uh, get, there are ways to relax those problems, get tight relaxations, and you know, uh, make it more solvable. So, but I'm not going to go into detail about that. Hopefully, if you get the paper out, please read, you will see. Uh, so <laughs> what I'm trying to get across here is that's the formula. If you can solve this, you will sort your temporal puzzle. You will solve your temporal puzzle. That's, that's basically the take home message from my talk. Either left side or right side, if you, if you, if you get, you know, if you solve this, you solve the temporal puzzle for most of the signals, most of the signals. You can definitely come up with a counter examples. So, who needs that? Well, the quick question is, I don't know. I'm working on it, who needs that? I'm, I'm, I'm seeking for you know, example, uh, people or uh, applications who may need that. Well, one example is, uh, I guess you guys might know better than me. Uh, I'm not a you know, a security person. But when they do encryption, they do permutation. They permute the sequence. That's one of the uh, go-to uh, steps in the encryption pipeline. So I'm assuming a scenario where I get the sequence back, uh, but it's permuted, and I need to come up with the correct sequence, basically. Top secret, permuted, can I go with that? Of course on videos. And these are actually res our results. Using our algorithm, I can literally take this guy, invert that ugly nonlinear uh, transformation, and sort, use, solving that optimization problem, and get something meaningful in time. But it may sort of, oh, I will. Well, I could sell that. Right? It looks easy. It looks easy. How about that one? Can you define an easy differential relation here? I mean, it's, it looks to me a bit more difficult. 
this one. This is this looks pretty healthy, but we can still um, recover a meaningful temporal order, which is the true order, because I know it from the video. I basically what I do is I take the video, I shuffle it, and I put it through my algorithm, and I test it if it recovers the right order. And actually, it works in situations like that too, where really the physics of the things are not really so obvious. We are not really doing a free throw. We are I don't know. I don't know how to explain actually as a physical phenomenon. So the algorithm is successful. I, that 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 at least those type of uh, sequences, and which we are pretty happy about. Another application. This is not from me. This is from a, a, a lady from uh, Israel. He, she introduced the application. Let's assume a scene. Obama is, you know, baby hand, baby, you know, handy. And a lot of cameras taking pictures <coughs> all around, right? Shlak, 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 shlak. A lot of uh, pictures are taken, and then what? They post it on the web, right? And the question now is, say we, we have access to those pictures, those pictures, all taken at the different times, right? Different seconds. One, second one, second two, second three, second four, second five. Same problem. The more difficulty is that from now different angles, different scales, it looks ugly again. We can still solve it, at least on this case. I don't know if you agree or if, if you uh, can see. This is the shuffled one. Uh, this is out of eight images. Uh, that was that was the uh, toy experiment basically we played with, and. We sorted it such that now the temporal order here is makes sense. It's looping, maybe uh, it may confuse, but when you watch it, really pause the, the temporal order really makes sense. For they, they stand up, they shake hands, and temporal is correct. Temporal order is correct. How much time uh, do I have? Less than 10. Less than 10. Oh, good, good. So since we started solving problems, let's solve one more problem. Why not? Um, same intuition. We're going, to, we're going to use the same intuition, just a different application. So we have similar looking objects here. Uh, we're tracking them when they're in the, when they're in the uh, frame. But sometimes, some of them get occluded, some of them get really close by. A ball goes over there and comes back. How on earth I'm going to say, okay, maybe if they're like around here, I can track them. All right. I can, you know form short track nets, but how am I going to say the ball that goes up when they come back, that's the same ball. How am I going to say that? And I'm, I'm not assuming any physics of the scene. I'm not assuming there's a, there's a uh, ground below the uh, image and there's a gravity somewhere. I'm not assuming anything. I'm just assuming there are objects moving around. So, same intuition. We're going to use the same intuition. Now, the question is, which sequence go, should go with which sequence? So, for A, you have two options, 1 or B. For B, you have two options, 1 or B. So, one, two, sorry, for B, you have two options, 1 or 2. <laughs> sorry. So, obviously, right, and obviously, A should go with 2, B should go with 1. Why? Why? Sorry? They're both incremental. Exactly. They're both incremental, right? I mean, incremental. Incremental in the same way. So, what you're saying is, when I stitch this guy with this guy, I'm not breaking the rule. So, there's a differential rule here. There's a differential rule, which is what you say, incremental. When I stitch with B with 1, I'm not, I'm not making things more difficult. It, it's consistent. So, in mathematical terms, it is exactly the same thing. What I'm doing is, if I match A with 2, I'm not, I'm not increasing the AR order. I'm not making things more, I'm not increasing the entropy. I'm not increasing the uh, description line. That's what I'm achieving, actually. If I did the opposite, I would end up with higher description line, higher entropy, etc., etc., higher. So, so basically what I'm saying is, same intuition, exactly the same intuition, 
applies here. We're going to solve, we're going to uh, use the same idea to solve the object of matching. And actually, 3D works. You can solve quite a few examples. Yeah, we can, th these ladies go out of the screen, uh, come back, there, there are skills over here, goes back, you know, goes up. Cross by, they, they go out of the screen, come back, we can still say, okay, this was the skill I've, I've seen. So, there are many, so, okay, there are quite a few cases that we can solve. So, all in all, what I'm saying is, solve more puzzles, and thanks for uh, joining us. So, in the video example, if you play the video backwards, that's another solution. Sure, sure. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm accepting, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, same. I mean, they are in co time, correct time order. Okay. It, yeah, it doesn't have to be, because they are sort of uh, equivalent, right? Yes, and uh, your algorithm guarantees that you will end up in one of these solutions. Sorry, I will end up what? So it does converge, right? The algorithm. So, so it converges to some way. But there are there are uh, examples that I cannot solve, which I'm not showing now. <laughs> right? I mean, that's that's the deal. Uh, I don't show everything. Uh, I show the ones where it works. Uh, so that's why I'm saying, you know, but quite a, you know quite a few number of uh, videos, especially when you take uh, fairly short horizons, uh, you can. The algorithm solves them. The algorithm is able to sort them out. Okay. Yeah. Fifty percent chance that it would sort them backwards. Well, what I'm doing is this. So I'm pushing the algorithm to start with one. Right. I have one, two, three, four, five shuffled. I, I I give the algorithm clue that it will start with one. So just to break the symmetry, just to break the symmetry, because I still have the four factorial uh, combinatorial part sitting there. It is just you know to break the symmetry so that algorithm doesn't um, jumps right. Uh, but otherwise, if I didn't do that, most probably it might end up somewhere, or actually it might end up not converging at all. So I'm basically eliminating one of the global minimas. Do you apply your algorithm to shuffle data from stock market? No. <laughs> no. So I'm taking simple examples. This is just started like two months ago. I mean. If, so, uh, data matters a lot, right? And uh, again, we need to really comply with the assumptions that the data should come from low dimensional uh, uh, system, and we would be able to go at least close to that low dimensional manifold. Because I, I think the assumption that you're making that the data that comes from physical world is low order AI yes. is. Uh, Construct, construct, yeah, uh, constraining, right? Yeah. So, in a sense, it is. In a sense, it is. But your uh, um, your financial data has some physical phenomenon underneath. The problem there is the the critical problem is the nonlinearity is harder to reverse there. For this one, I found. Yeah, I mean, we found we found a simple way. At least, if we are not going to the exact manifold, we are getting close to it. So that when we go there, the signals are meaningful. If you give me a good nonlinearity. Uh, sorry, immersion, and I take that financial signal, go to a, uh, that a good manifold. Most probably, we will achieve something. I'm not, uh, I'm not claiming that I can sort, you know, thousand uh, length uh, sequence, but I can attempt, hopefully, get a meaningful sequence out of it. That I can, data that comes from chaotic. Uh, as a well, then, 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 then you can. Yeah, I mean, the assumption doesn't. There, there's no account razor, There is no minimum description like that. Uh, it's noise there. There's no, we cannot sort noise. Uh, what's the maximum number of frames that you experiment? Very critical. Why? Yeah, why? So, so that that's 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 a bottleneck. That's a bottleneck. Let me tell you. The, let me tell you why. Uh, so, the optimization problem that we pose, when we relax the problem, actually it's originally an STP mixed ex, mixed STP problem, mixed integer STP problem, and it is there is no really uh, ready-made tool that we can you know, throw that STP, mix STP on that. What we're doing is we are playing a smart trick that and we are turning the STP to a linear mixed integer. So when we turn it to a linear mixed integer problem at the end, 
we can use uh, um, we can use uh, industrial solvers or you know um, basically already out there solvers. The problem is still is there. Um, you know that when you go very high to very high dimensions, those even those you know uh, industrial solvers get hard time, right? Mm -hmm. So, and our number of uh, number of variables are n square. N square here. So that's why the answer is uh, you're not getting too much of a horizon. We are solving a uh, number of frames, say, at the order of tens. Right? Less than 20 right now. But it, they don't have to be consecutive, though. I mean, they don't have to be consecutive, like, right after here. But these are the orders that we can attempt right now. There are, we, we are working on, actually, we, yeah, we have an idea to make it faster. Um, more into, yeah. Any other questions? So you have the, you have sequences of data that have two solutions, or more than two solutions, two meaningful solutions. Sure, or might be. Why not? So uh, a very interesting thing is that can you design a good jigsaw puzzle that has many solutions? Many so solutions? so the, the, so when you think one D, yeah. it's usually more two D. You know. I, I, uh, so if your if your signal is one D, like one two three four five. Mm -hmm type of, uh, uh, say, take a sinusoid, right? If I take more than a one period, one period, I can take the periodic uh, samples, trivial example, right? I can swap them, nothing changes. They are both equivalent, they are both true, right? But one is right, one is wrong. So the constraining thing is, when you go to multiple dimensions, we hope, and that's the most, most this is the case, other signals sort of constrain the solution. So there's one sign here maybe, but there's another sign with a different frequency, different phase. So it constrains the solution uh, to a less and less number. Do I make sense? Yes. Yeah. But there are still solutions. Yes. yes. There are. You can still get a video or get a shuffle it. Oh my God! This is not true. But when you look at the uh, final signal, it's really lower order than the original one. There are situations like that too. So this is not a universal proposition, but yeah. it handles quite a bit of them. Uh, okay, well, that's it. That thanks our speaker again. And we have uh, two more seminar this semester on uh, April 9th. Okay, you have three more. <laughs> April 2nd, April 2nd. Yeah, so yeah, 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 we're yeah. looking for the emails and we're going to email everybody for the next. Thank you, everybody. Please leave me the form on the desk or in the <laughs>